The Unitarian Universalist Church of Ventura, California, presents a homily by our minister, the Rev. Dana Warsnop, titled, Bloom Where You Are Planted, recorded on Sunday morning, June 14th, 2020. Good morning, and welcome to Worship with the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ventura. We are a blooming community of resistance and resilience seeking justice. I am the Reverend Dana Warsnop, minister of this congregation, and I am joined by a whole team of folks who have collaborated to bring this service into being. Here is the lineup of our entire tech team. And today our director is Brian Fortune, our assistant director is Kitty Merrill, Susan Brinkmeyer did the magic slides and our tech support is Joe Osborne. The on-screen people will introduce themselves as we go along. As ever, it is so wonderful to be together again. Let us enter sacred space. Good morning, everybody. I'm Worship Associate Keith Cook. We hope that everyone here has a chalice or a candle to light and something to light it with. So let's all light our chalices together. We begin our service with these words from an anonymous author. May we be reminded here of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love and service to the altar of humanity. May we know once again that we are not isolated beings, but connected in mystery and miracle to the universe, to this community, and to each other. Come, let us worship together. There is a saying that has been coming to mind a lot lately. People plan, God laughs. It speaks to all the ways life can be humbling, especially if we think we have much or even any control in our lives. The last three months have been, have especially upended our illusions of control, first by the novel coronavirus, and then by the murder of George Floyd just three weeks ago. Our world has completely changed twice. First, we all stayed home and the church went online. Now, we cannot look away from horrifying truths and many are back out on the streets, masked and at a social distance as best we can. God, I like to think of it actually more as the trickster God in, in the universe, but those tricksters have been laughing at our worship planning too, as it adapts to new realities and to painful truths. We do our flower communion on the second Sunday of June each year, and it is a well-loved tradition shared by Unitarian Universalists across the continent. I briefly considered canceling flower communion completely this year because that would be a dramatic statement that things must change. But luckily, I, it was only a brief thought because I remembered the story of flower communion and what it means. It was invented by Norbert Chopek, a Unitarian minister in Prague in the 1920s and 30s. 
to symbolize the wild diversity of our human being and our capacity for goodness within ourselves and in community. Yet Norbert Chopek died in a concentration camp in the 1940s because of his resistance to fascism. Canceling flower communion would actually dishonor his legacy and our own as Unitarian Universalists. On Flower Communion Sunday, we also traditionally celebrate our youth. And today, Zoe Petroff is bridging. She has graduated from high school and is moving into adulthood. So we honor this transition with what we call a bridging ceremony, which Emily Carroll has once again found a way to do beautifully online. And what a time to be moving into adulthood. In Zoe's case, going off to college, what an exciting and terrifying time. We send her off with our blessings, with hopes that what we in this congregation have managed to impart to her, to teach her, hopes that that will help her over these next months and years. Though terrifying and exciting for all of us, one of the most hopeful things arising in response to these times is the power of young voices. This is the world they are inheriting for, from us, for good and for ill. They need our support and love, and we need to listen to their passion. So heck yeah, we're having flower communion. We are strong and beautiful and capable as people and as a community. We can yet live into the possibility of an earth made fair and all her people one. So now we offer blessings as Zoe Petroff crosses that bridge into this new world. Good morning. I'm Emily Carroll, Director of Religious Education. The Unitarian Universalist Bridging Ceremony is a rite of passage where we celebrate what our high school seniors have brought to our community and send them forth into the world with the strength and values that Unitarian Universalism and this congregation have given them. Today we honor an amazing youth who is making this transition. Zoe Petroff, daughter of Helen Petroff, graduates from El Camino High School this morning and will attend UC Santa Cruz in the fall. She is plan planning to major in plant biology. Zoe, Zoe, this time marks a significant change in your life and in the life of your family and friends, in the life of this congregation. We encourage you to seek UU connections and the company of other UU young adults wherever you may go and continue to share your gifts in the world. Hi, I'm Helen Petroff. Uh, I'm Zoe's mom, and Zoe and I moved to uh, Ojai in 2006, and shortly thereafter, we joined the church. So Zoe's been coming to church uh, since she was about five years old, and um, so like many parents, I uh, volunteered in the um, uh, religious education and kind of pitched in and uh, got to um, 
co-teach lots of classes, some of which Zoe was in, some of which she was not. Um, but she uh, also, um, so she went through the, the pretty much the whole UU uh, religious education curriculum. And she did OWL, um, since with OWL, we try not to have uh, the parents, you know, uh, facilitating in the class where their child is taking the, the class. I didn't, I wasn't uh, involved with that, but I know that she enjoyed it a lot. Um, and uh, now uh, Zoe is uh, graduating from high school and she's graduating from uh, El Camino here in Ventura. And she uh, is heading off to UC Santa Cruz. Um, and I am super proud of her. Um, and uh, so I um, prepare to just a little statement. <laughs> so um, I'm extremely proud of Zoe uh, for all that she has accomplished to get to this exciting point in her life. Um, and while I'm going to miss seeing her every day, um, I'm happy she's spreading her wings and exploring the world outside of Ojai and Ventura County. I know she will be forming important friendships and having life-changing experiences over the next few years. Uh, but she has a, a good toolkit, I think, um, of self-awareness uh, and a strong moral compass uh, that will help her face whatever challenges lie ahead. Hi, um, I'm Zoe. Uh, I prepared a little speech about what I learned from you. you. Uh, over the course of my time being a Unitarian Universalist, I have learned many things. I have learned to accept people regardless of their cultural and religious backgrounds. I have learned to appreciate the beauty of our earth and all of the creatures that inhabit it. And most importantly, I have learned how to incorporate the seven UU principles into my daily life. I have found that the seven UU principles help me understand the world a little better. When I have trouble figuring out how I want to respond to a certain problem, I have found that the UU principles help me come up with a plan that adheres to my personal values. For example, when I was deciding what I wanted to major in during college, I decided on plant sciences because I have a respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. And I plan to follow these principles for the rest of my life. So we now invite the congregation to join in a bridging litany for Zoe. Your responses will be on your screens. We bless you now as we give you over to your future. We honor this transition in your life. We see you standing at a threshold, moving from youth to young adulthood. We honor this transformative time in your life. We bless you now as you cross this bridge. We pledge to you our ongoing support. We pledge to one another to be in community fully and openly with all of the blessings and responsibilities that brings. We pledge to support and embrace all the generations that make up this community. Let us move together into the future of this, our Unitarian Universalist faith. We support you. We send our love. May we always be your spiritual home. Each Sunday, Oh, let me just take a moment there. <clears throat> blessings, blessings upon this journey, Zoe. We're, we'll miss you. We're really glad that you have been part of this congregation. You'll always have a home here.
Each Sunday, this congregation gives away our collection to an organization in the larger community or to funds that help people in our own church. We now invite you to donate online. You will see the link on the next slide, which will also be po posted in the chat as a direct link. And you can always find this link on, um, on our website as well. Our offering today goes to De Beneville Pines to help our UU camp in the San Bernardino Mountains survive the COVID closure. The camp's $50,000 monthly costs are usually covered by registration fees for retreats and events like family camp. And so the cancellation of all of the camps, perhaps through the fall, means that the camp desperately needs our help if it is be, to be there for the future of our children. And it is a powerful, connecting, transforming force in the lives of our children. Tanner Linden, who preached for us just a few weeks ago, grew up in this UU congregation and he grew up at De Beneville Pines as well. When Tanner bridged he bridged with us last year and also at General Assembly in Spokane. And he was interviewed about his experience as a youth camper. He talked about the depth of relationships and the lifelong memories that he made at youth camps. The ways he grew as a youth leader and the dream he has of becoming, of developing a new UU university with his best friend from summer camp. Tanner is one of hundreds of UU youth who participate in youth and family camps at De Beneville Pines each year. Your support of camping ministries ensures that this vital program, this vital program, will be there for families and youth who will become tomorrow's UU leaders. Please give it generously as you always do. A member of our church community, Harriet McNamara, died on Friday night. Harriet was a member of this church for 26 years, and I was told by more than one person that she was an absolute anchor of the tenor section of the choir for almost all of that time. Harriet's son, Brian, lives in New Jersey and was able to talk with his mother over the last few months. And in this time of COVID, he was so grateful that members of this church were able to reach out to Harriet. The family is planning a small graveside service, as was Harriet's wish. In honor and in remembrance of Harriet McNamara, we light our memorial candle from the chalice flame and extinguish the chalice for some moments of silent reflection. The chalice flame will then be relit and both will be extinguished at the end of the service. Let us reflect with kindness and tenderness upon the memory of Harriet McNamara. I invite you now into a time of meditation.
Take some moments and settle into your sacred center and breathe. Breathe again, a silent meditation. So now we will participate in our flower communion ritual in two parts. Uh, you have sent in photographs of flowers, some with yourselves and some of flowers that you are in your garden that you have come across in the world. Let us think of the bright and beautiful diversity, the power, the strength, and the growing energy and life and spirit of this congregation and what we can do in the world, a flower communion. Where you're planted sounds like a great grand theme for flower communion, doesn't it? For we do want to blossom and grow and grow ever more beautiful as individuals and as a community. Yet, after I had decided not to cancel flower communion, I wondered if, as a title, it might be just a little too cute. But I thought about that again all the way through, and I realized it's actually perfect. Bloom where you're planted, here, now, in this 
time. We still need to bloom, to find power, beauty, and purpose. Those are the fruits of a spiritual life, after all. And the only question is how we will now use that beauty and power and purpose here, now, where we are planted. For two years, at least, I've preached um, the word, I've preached the wisdom of civil rights activist Brian Stevenson and what he says we need to do to create a just society. He says, he tells us, and here I am speaking especially to white people. He tells us we must be willing to be uncomfortable. We must be able to face uncomfortable truths about race and racism. We must also change the narratives we live by. We must recognize that many cultural, common cultural narratives benefit us and that they exclude other narratives and voices and truths. At the demonstration at Government Center last week, an African American told the crowd, racism is not a black problem. Racism is a white problem. How's that for a new narrative? And here I ask the people of color to forgive me for taking some time too long to understand something that has been obvious, that has long been obvious to you. Yes, black, Indigenous and people of color bear the brunt of, discrimi of discrimination and violence from racism. Yet, who benefits from it? Who perpetuates it? Anyone feeling uncomfortable yet? If you are, I ask you not to run away from it. Listen to the voice of a black man who lives in Ventura County. Take it in, consider it deeply. Let it change you, even if it hurts. Yet don't get all blamey of me or of the black speaker or of yourself. For we live in a systematically racist, white supremacist culture. It is in the air we breathe. It is how we were all, white folks and people of color. It is how we were all raised. For if you are white, and if you are white, that culture also conspired you, we can say it was directly planned to keep you asleep in it as well, ignorant of its effects on your life and on others. And yet, as you shake off the slumber and wake up to new and uncomfortable truths, please do the inner work you need to do. Work through the pain, the anger, the deep sadness, and yes, even the shame. And then do everything you can to change the narrative, to change the system. We have known for a long time that our system, our society has been deeply unfair, violent unto death to black, indigenous and people of color for 400 years. Too often it is um, the white folks who are the heavy-footed ones who imprint the fear 
of people of color. The people of color who learn to be afraid with our mother's milk, as Audre Lorde's poem tells us. That fear was used to keep us all silent in the face of horrible injustice. So let's listen and learn and demonstrate and listen and witness and finally listen and speak the new and uncomfortable truths we see. It really wasn't the final straw that broke the camel's back. It was the millions of tiny bits of straw built up over centuries. And it was the failure of those loading the basket to note that it was getting awfully full. So, let us change the narrative. Here is a narrative that actually sounds kind of crazy, or at least very radical, especially to white folks. We are hearing now calls to defund the police. Some hear this as the equivalent to abolishing the police, which it is not. Yet it is intended as a radical statement. It comes from people who are just done. They are done trying to reform our law enforcement and justice system. Because reform, reform sounds to them as just, and it just amounts to piecemeal nibbling around the edges that just keeps the main structures in place. So we don't need reform. We need to upend the system, wipe the slate clean, start over, starting with new narratives and assumptions. For yes, there are bad apples in every human group. Yet the original proverb was, one bad apple does spoil the whole bunch. Benjamin Franklin said something like that 300 years ago. And he might have gotten it from Shakespeare, of course, who got it from some other ancient source. And yet it has been switched around for us now. And was it really that awful song by Donny Osmond and his brothers that flipped it? This is how a toxic system perpetuates itself, especially through those bad apples. So here is an addition to the narrative about George Floyd's death that I learned after, a, a couple weeks after the fact, and it has changed, nuanced the story even more for me. The other three cops who held George Floyd down or stood watching were rookies. And the cop who kneeled on his neck for nearly nine minutes, that was their supervisor. He was teaching them how to be a cop in Minneapolis. He was showing them how the police can and should treat black lives. There are many, many very good people who go into law enforcement for all the right reasons because they want to serve, yet they enter a system that is corrupted by systemic racism, which has been handed down and handed down and handed down. 
a person of color told me recently that the police have two faces. There's one that white folks see. I know that one. I have only been helped, never harassed by a police officer. Yet the face that people of color see is very different. The person who shared this with me also said that every man and their family has been arrested. So here's another narrative of systemic racism. Walmart recently announced that it would no longer keep hair care products for African Americans behind glass in locked display cases. What does it tell you when you have to ask someone to unlock the shampoo for you? These are only a few of the narratives, a few of the stories that our culture tells all of us. And so many of them come in us on a subliminal level to all of us, everyone, white folks and people of color, we hear it all the time. Some of us see it more clearly, are affected more directly, and some of us are in a position to barely notice. So, we must all listen to the voices that are saying, turn the whole system on its head. Defunding the police is an intentionally drastic statement. It's a narrative to make people sit up and take notice. The term law and order has two faces. Most white and prosperous people hear in that phrase law and order. They hear safety and security. Yet those words are code for people of color. That means keeping them in their place. So here's another, new, another narrative possible. What if we called it a police service rather than a police force? What if we stopped giving police military gear? What if we demilitarized our police service? We need systemic change on so many levels, not just with the police. There is so much more in all of these issues so much more to explore, so much more to learn. So let us do this hard, uncomfortable, empowering and liberating work together. I sent out an email this past week talking about creating a book group on racial justice issues. And then I learned that you can do a Netflix watch party. So I'm going to flip that into a movie uh, watching group that we will watch films together on Netflix and have a discussion. And so this is one of the things that we can do to understand the narratives as they currently are and see how to change them. I encourage you all to go to protests if you can, if you feel safe doing that. And if you can't, or if you don't feel safe, because there's all kinds of reasons to stay home right now, still socially distanced and taking care of ourselves, we are having efforts like You, You, The Vote, where we are writing letters to encourage people to register to vote. Flower Communion has a powerful message that every person is strong and beautiful and capable of growing and changing. Norbert Chopek created a ritual of beauty and carried it with him and for his congregation into frightening times. There is a life force in us. 
what the song that the Merrill family called the, the song that the Merrill family sang called Wick was speaking of a wick in a candle and wick becomes an adjective. When a thing is wick, the song goes, it has a light all around it. Maybe not a light you can see, but hiding down below, a spark is asleep inside it, waiting for the right time to be seen. And all through the darkest nighttime, it's waiting right there. It's waiting for the right time. When a thing is wick, it will grow. And so let us bloom where we have been planted. Let us grow and change uncomfortably, delightfully. We'll need all the beauty and strength and power we can muster because we who believe in freedom cannot rest. Amen. May it be so. Please join me in prayer. Holy beingness of many names and no name, mystery beyond all naming, spirit of life which dwells within and among and beyond us this day and always, may we bloom wherever it is we are planted. May we know that deep in every soul is a wick, is a spirit that is growing, that is green and will blossom when given warmth and kindness and time. May we know that this is our work, we who believe in freedom, we who believe that no one is free until all are free, that my, our, each of our own liberation is tied up in everyone else's liberation, and that we were never meant to survive because our lives have a limit. And so we can do the work we can do now. Lean into one another, because though we who believe in freedom cannot rest, we do also need to spell each other. And so may all who are ill find healing. May all who are in despair find hope. May those who are without home find shelter. And may all those in comfort, in conflict and war throughout the world 
no peace. And may all who are taking to the streets in horror and in hope, may all know justice. Amen and blessed be. Please join Reverend Dana in extinguishing your chalice at home. We extinguish the chalice, but not the light in our hearts, the warmth of community, or the assurance of goodness we have found here. Those we carry into our lives until we gather again. I leave you with these words. Bloom where you are planted. Examine your hearts. Be uncomfortable. Seek new truths and ways to tell them. Work for liberation. For no one is free until all are free. And all should be free. Bloom where you are planted. Use your power and your beauty and change the world. Go forth in love. Go forth in peace. Go forth in good health. May it be so. We hope you've enjoyed listening to Bloom Where You Are Planted, presented by the Rev. Dana Warsnop, recorded on June 14th, 2020, for the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ventura, California.